Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, we are going to look at Proverbs 10 together. Book of Wisdom. Uh, let's pray and then we'll read it together. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for just, oh God, that you relate to us, that you connect with us, that we're made in your image and we're made to know God. And through Jesus Christ, Lord, we have the full range of knowledge and connection with God. Lord, it's, it's too much for us to really comprehend, but it's beautiful. And uh, Lord, you're eternal and we want to just soak. We want to free fall in your spirit, Lord, until that day we, we cross the river, we cross out of this dark world into your full light. And I just pray now as we turn our attention to these inspired words, God, I pray you just uh, lace them into the fabric of our souls and uh, grow us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's read Proverbs 10 and then let's, you know, grab a couple of insights. Uh, it has 32 verses. Uh, maybe this one I'll read, and if, if, if we're stopped on something interesting, I might reflect a little bit and then keep reading, as opposed to read the whole thing. Um, I might kind of give a few little reflections as we go, okay? We'll finish it, though. Okay, uh, Proverbs 10. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Let me just stop there on verse 9. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. You know, one thing, even in the Psalms, you'll see people say, Lord, why do the wicked prosper and the righteous suffer, right? And it happens. Some of the most godly, righteous people, we will misjudge because they will not look prospered in worldly terms. That's why in Hebrews 11, 37 to 38, it talks about heroes of faith saying the world was not worthy of these people, but it says they went around destitute Right, um, I think I have that one up here. Yep, Hebrews eleven thirty seven. Destitute, afflicted, mistreated, the world was not worthy of them. So we're going to misjudge people. There will be righteous people that are uh, not prospered. So here, where it says, "Whoever walks in integrity walks securely," right? We have to remember, as people made in the image of God, Genesis one twenty seven, eternity in our hearts, Ecclesiastes three eleven. This wisdom and truth is not just about this life. It is about eternity. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, not just in this life, but through the exit door of this life into the courts of God. You walk in integrity. You walk securely spiritually, whether it's recognized by the world, rewarded by the world. You might even suffer for it, but you are secure so says God. And, and, you know, we have to remember the big picture here. 
We're not just trying to get prospered here, right? Let's read on. Whoever winks the eye causes trouble and a babbling fool will come to ruin. Again, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Again, it's repeating these. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. <clears throat> On the lips of him who has understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him who lacks sense. The wise lay up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool brings ruin near. A rich man's wealth is his strong city. The poverty of the poor is their ruin. I want to stop right here. First, just to note, see how Proverbs, it just categorizes the fool. I think, you know, Jesus said if anyone calls someone a fool in their heart, they've committed murder, as it were. This is in Matthew 5. That's in terms of a judgmental, condemning type of prideful thing, right? You fool, compared to me. But the Proverbs are... are then on the other hand, what I find so funny in life, we, we might be quick to call people fools, or speak that language when we shouldn't. But then we don't call people fools when we should. Not necessarily to their face, not in a judgment call, but in a category where we say, this isn't okay. This is babbling. This comes to ruin. This person is foolish, and we're drawing a line in terms of our connection here. I, I feel spiritually when we should be standing on the Proverbs and the wisdom of God and the categories around people that God gives. We don't. But we do in the flesh. In the flesh, we go around judging people. But where God says, this is foolish, this is foolish, this should be avoided. We kind of go, oh, oh, you know, don't want to judge that person. It's like, okay. No, that person is to be judged. <laughs> like you should be in your heart, proverbially taking note of this dynamic here and drawing a line. That would honor God. What we shouldn't be doing is being judgmental over here, right, on an ego level. But fool comes up, it comes up, it comes up. There are fools. And it's okay to discern that. Um, the wage of the righteous leads to life. The gain of the wicked to sin. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life. But he who rejects reproof leads others astray. The one who conceals hatred has lying lips. And whoever utters slander is a fool. Interesting, the one who conceals hatred has lying lips. Well, like, are they supposed to be making their hatred known? No, that's not the point. The point is you have hateful people that are pretending they're not hating. They're kind of adding to their hatefulness facade, pretense, deceit. You know, the one who conceals hatred. There are people, I've, I've felt it. Have you felt it? Proverbs 27, 4, one I know by heart, it says, Anger is cruel, wrath is overwhelming, but before a jealous man... Who can stand jealousy, envy? There is no satisfying it because it's not about you. There's something in them that is envious of God and you are in the way. You are representing something they want to control, be, have. If you weren't there, someone else would be there. Before an envious man, a jealous man, who can stand? You can't. It's it's like a war with them and God. And... Uh, it, it, here, it, 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 it seems similar. The one who conceals hatred, concealing hatred. It's like, the, like deal with your hatefulness, you know, with people. Some people are so angry and they're they, passive aggressive. It leaks, it leaks, it leaks. And it's just like, just can, can look in the mirror. You're angry. You have hate in your heart. Own it. Um, deal with it. 
When words are many, transgression is not lacking. This is Proverbs 10, 19. Um, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Another version uh, translates this as with the increase of words is the increase of sin. Sometimes just, it's not even so much what's being said. It's just there's too much talk going on. It, it can't be quality. <laughs> it's going to touch on and dip into sin. Sometimes just, just too much talk. Time for silence. I have five kids. Sometimes I'm just like, maybe we should have a time just, if we're going to sit in the living room, everyone on their book or something, about, can we stop talking? And that's because I sense sometimes, and it's I'm not as vulnerable, just trundling talk, just shh. Increase of words is the increase of sin. There's a time just to, to still the mouth, you know? Um, that's 1019. Whoever restrains his lips is prudent. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. All right, there's a verse for, you know, some form of God's blessing, wealth adding no sorrow to it, right? There isn't a sense of grief and regret. And I got this blood money, abusing people, underpaying employees, not giving when God has given me opportunity to give. The blessing of God, the increase of wealth of God is righteous type of blessing. It shouldn't look and feel like the striving of a man who loves money and also accumulates wealth. It's a different type of prosperity one has the spirit of god in it one does not doing wrong is like a joke to a fool but wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding is wisdom pleasure to you is it pleasure what the wicked dreads will come upon him but the desire of the righteous will be granted when the tempest passes the wicked is no more but the righteous is established forever. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send them. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. The hope of the righteous brings joy, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless, but destruction to evildoers. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. So just remember with Proverbs, you know, we got holy, righteous wisdom just being put out there. Um, in a sense, ultimately, there's, there's truths in here we will experience in life, two degrees. And there's timing, right? There's a time for everything. It says in Ecclesiastes 3, there are, there's a time for a proverb. There's going to be things in here you experience, things you claim by faith and they and they actually happen there's going to be other times and situations spiritually where a certain proverb isn't to be applied like the blessing of the lord makes rich and therefore if you see a, a christian a, a righteous person who's who's not rich or they're in fact poor or struggling someone might use this and judge them well the blessing of the lord makes rich so the blessing of god must not be on this person wrong Read the rest of the Bible. Jesus was poor. That's, uh, that's why people, you know, could, could say that of him. So what, how do we apply this? Well, apply it. In other words, it's not a blanket truth. Maybe in heaven, but here on earth, there's, there's moments and there's people. And it's a time for this and a time for this. And this proverb fits this situation it, it 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 resonates as the word of god this other proverb fits this situation or this other scripture in history we don't we don't 
take God's truth and squeeze it into boxes and make them fit verses. We, we, we let the Bible reflect the spirit and truth and move of God so that we can understand what's going on in this or that situation, right? So Proverbs are not hardcore, you know, milestones by which we judge everybody. They are this the wisdom of God that, that we, we access, we store up in our hearts, and God will call them to our minds, John 14, 26, as they fit spiritually a certain situation, as God speaks, right? As God speaks. Listen for that voice of God that reflects off the word. So it's a spirit word. We'll leave it there. God bless you.